In this tutorial, we are going to take a given set of data and express that data in a box and whisker plot. The first step to creating any box and whisker plot is to take the given data and order it from least to greatest. After you have completed ordering your data, there are five important pieces of information that you must find in order to construct your box and whisker plot. You must find the minimum as well as the maximum, and you also must find Q1, Q2, and Q3. Q1, Q2, and Q3, as well as the minimum and the maximum, are five important pieces of information as they will establish the boundaries of the four quarters necessary for your box and whisker plot. Although you only have four quarters, you need five points to establish the boundaries. Your box and whisker plot will be broken into four different quartiles. The first quartile starts at the minimum and ends at Q1. The second quartile starts at Q1 and ends at the point Q2. The third quartile starts at Q2 and ends at Q3. And the fourth quartile starts at Q3 and ends at the maximum. And some people call the maximum Q4. Now that we have reviewed key features of a box and whisker plot, let's construct our box and whisker plot using the data given in this problem. The first thing we should do when constructing our box and whisker plot is to establish a scale. To establish the range of our scale, we should find the minimum and the maximum of our data to begin with. The minimum score given is 70% and the maximum score is 100. So our scale below our box and whisker plot should range from 70 to 100. After you have established the minimum and the maximum of your scale, fill in all the missing numbers in between your minimum and maximum. In this case, I'm just going to count by fives to keep things simple. You should do this before finding Q1, Q2, and Q3. When drawing your scale, you are really just drawing a snapshot of the number line. The snapshot that we are drawing starts at 70 and ends at 100. After you have finished drawing your number scale, we need to find the five points which will define the boundaries of our four quartiles. The first point that you should locate is Q2. Q2 is simply the median of the given data set. The middle number of our given data set is 85. Because 85 is our median, that means 85 is Q2. Locate 85 on your number scale and draw a thin vertical line directly above 85. Next, we are going to find where Q1 is located. To figure out Q1, simply take the data to the left of your median, which is the first half of your data, and find the median of that half of your data. To the left of 85, we have 70, 75, 80, and of course another 80. Because we have four pieces of data, there is no middle number. There are two middle numbers. If this happens, simply take the two middle numbers and find the average of those two numbers. By doing this, you will find the value that is located directly in the middle of those two middle numbers. Simply take 75 and 80 and add them together and divide by 2. That will give you the number that is located directly in the middle of those two values. After doing this, we will find that 77.5 or 77 and a half is the value directly in the middle of 75 and 80. 77.5 is Q1. So locate where 77 and a half would be on your number line given below and draw a vertical line directly above 77.5 to establish where Q1 will be located. Next we are going to locate Q3. To find Q3, Simply take all of the data after your median of 85 and locate the middle value. Once again, we will have to find the median of two numbers because after 85, we have four pieces of data which is an even number. Therefore, we have two middle values. In this case, 96 and 98. It should be obvious just by looking at 96 and 98 what is directly in the middle of 96 and 98, which would be 97. So 97 is Q3. Draw a vertical line directly above 97 on your number line below and that will establish 
where the fourth quartile starts and where the third quartile ends. This point is called Q3. After you have established where Q1, Q2, and Q3 will be located above your number line, we now have the boundaries to define where our middle two quarters will be located. These middle two quarters are also called the interquartile range because they are the two quarters that are located in the middle of your four quarters. After drawing the boxes, which represent your middle two quartiles, let's now draw the whiskers. The first whisker will start at the minimum and end at the beginning of your second quartile. So it starts at the minimum and ends at Q1. And the whisker at the end of our box and whisker plot starts at Q3 and ends at the maximum. Let's quickly review the parts to our box and whisker plot. The first quartile starts at the minimum and ends at Q1. The second quartile starts at Q1 and ends at Q2, which is of course the median of our data. The third quartile begins at Q2 and ends at Q3. And the fourth quartile of our data starts at Q3 and ends at the maximum of our data. Notice that it takes five points to establish the four quartiles of our data. With any box of whisker plot, you should also be able to identify the IQR or interquartile range. The interquartile range is the distance from Q1 to Q3. The interquartile range is simply the middle two quarters of your data. Because Q3 is located at 97 and Q1 is located at 77.5, we simply take these two values and subtract them together to get our IQR or interquartile range. The difference of these two values is 19.5 or 19.5, so we would say that the interquartile range has a value of 19.5. Make sure not to confuse the interquartile range with just the range. If you are asked for the range of your box and whisker plot, this is simply the difference between the minimum and the maximum. The difference between 70 and 100 for our given data set is 30. So we would say that the overall range of our data is 30 and the interquartile range is 19.5. So in review, when creating a box and whisker plot, you first must order your data. After ordering your data, Find the minimum and the maximum to establish the scale of your box and whisker plot. Then find the median of your entire data set to establish where Q2 is located. Then you must find Q1, which is the median of the first half of your data set, and then find Q3, which is the median of the second half of your data set. Now that you have established the important five points to create your box and whisker plot, then you must draw your boxes in and then add the whiskers on either end of your interquartile range and you have your box and whisker plot.